When it comes to recursion, the Fibonacci sequence is an absolute classic, and we'll go over how to write a recursive function in Python that generates terms from the Fibonacci sequence today. If you already know a bit about programming recursive functions in Python, give this one a try yourself before watching the whole video. It's really simple, though we will begin with a brief introduction to the Fibonacci sequence just in case you haven't encountered it before. And it's simple enough that we can explain it right here on the computer, just do a little bit of typing. The Fibonacci sequence is a famous sequence that goes like this. One, one, two, three, five, eight, 13, 21, and so on. Of course, what do I mean by and so on? That's a big part of the story here. Well, the Fibonacci sequence is generated by simply adding the previous two terms of the sequence to get the next term. So for example, 21, that came from adding the previous two terms, 13 and eight. 13 came from adding the previous two terms, eight and five. Eight came from adding the previous two terms, five and three, and so on. So the function works by calling itself by adding the previous two Fibonacci numbers to get the next Fibonacci number. And that's why it is a perfect function to try out recursion with. With the Fibonacci sequence, you see this two comes from adding the first two terms, one and one. But once we get to that second one, there's a question now, where does this one come from? There aren't two previous terms in the sequence in order to add together. And the answer to that is this is simply an initial condition. Because the Fibonacci sequence is generated by adding the previous two terms, we need two initial conditions in order for the Fibonacci sequence to work. Now we could generate other Fibonacci style sequences by beginning with two numbers other than one and one. But when we talk about the Fibonacci sequence, this is the one we mean. The only common alteration is that it could be started with zero and one, and aside from the zero at the beginning, you would still get the exact same sequence of numbers. Let's get into programming the function. We'll begin by defining our function, and let's not get too fancy with it, we'll just call it Fibonacci, and our input parameter will be n, representing the nth Fibonacci number. So if I input five, for example, I want my function to return the fifth Fibonacci number. If I return n, or excuse me, if I plug in n, I want the function to return the nth Fibonacci number. Sorry for little voice cracks, I'm still a little sick with COVID right now. Um, so, now I, what do I need to return? Based on how the function works, we just talked about it. The way it works is by adding the previous two terms to get the next term. So to get the nth term, we need to add the previous Fibonacci number, which is Fibonacci of n minus one, and then add the Fibonacci number before that, so two terms ago, which is found using our function, Fibonacci of n minus two. So by calling our function inside the function, we can generate more Fibonacci numbers. Now the mechanics of how the function works are already in place. The only thing we're missing is the initial condition so that the function doesn't just infinitely call itself. It needs a place to start. Now we could start with n equals zero and n equals one, specifying the zeroth Fibonacci number and the first Fibonacci number. But in terms of language, it seems a little more uh, intuitive to start with n equals one and n equals two, representing the first Fibonacci number and the second Fibonacci number. So we'll just need to throw in a if statement here, a conditional telling the function what to return for n equals one and n equals two. So we could say if n equals one or n equals two using that simple logical operator, that'd be one way to do it. And then we would just say return what? Well, remember the first two terms of the Fibonacci sequence are both one. So if n is one or n is two, we'd simply have the function return one. Alternatively, instead of using or, we could say if n is in this list of numbers, 
the one that contains one and two. So if we're asking for the first term or the second term, hey, that's just one, so return one. Either of those work just fine. Now our function is done. Let's go ahead and write a simple loop to print out some values of the function and make sure it's working right. So I'll say for i in range 10, this is just gonna have one problem. If I loop through range 10, that's going from zero to nine. And remember, we started our Fibonacci sequence with n equals one. So I need to specify here that I want the range function to go from one to 10 instead of just range of 10, which would by default go from zero to nine. So I'll have for i in range one to 10, what do I want? I just wanna print my function, plug i into the function and print it out. So Fibonacci of i. Let's go ahead and run this. And there we have the first nine Fibonacci numbers looking uh, very nice. Like I said, we could also start the Fibonacci sequence with zero and one and get the same result aside from the zero at the start. Uh, if I wanted to change this function to work like that, we could say if n equals one, so we're asking for the first Fibonacci number, return zero, and then we'll just need another if statement. We'll say if n equals two, the second Fibonacci number, return one. Like I said, this is gonna give us the same sequence, except it's all shifted over one, and the first term is now zero. So if we print these numbers, we'll get pretty much the same thing. And that's how you program the Fibonacci sequence with a recursive function in Python. Just say